Take no, no, you, you can post. Right. It's all good. You can post it. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I think Just it's awesome. I'm really, I'm really happy that, yeah, this is a late for practice exclusive. Boom, dude. Yes, no, sir. <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> Welcome to Late for Practice. I'm your host, Will, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, Yuri Van Buren. Yuri is a South African native. He's been playing lately for the Utah Warriors and the Tel Aviv Heat, uh, and future LA rugby superstar. How are you doing, man? Well, I'm good. I'm very well, thanks. How are you guys? Thanks for having me once again. You know, we're stoked to have to have Yuri on. Yuri's been a fan favorite here at, uh, in Utah. Uh shouts of Yuri throughout the whole arena as he comes out with a scrum cap. Why did you go with the decision for the scrum cap? Oh, well, I've actually, the whole blue scrum cap thing has come with me for quite a long time, to be honest. Um, I think since I've started my professional career, I started playing with a blue cap and it just felt right to keep it the same color going right through my career. So hopefully I managed to do that. But I'm, I, must, I must say it's getting harder and harder to find that specific shade of blue <laughs> so, well it, it is iconic you were born in lady brand um i mean it, what was there to do i know that you played water polo there what else did you do uh in south africa when you were a kid well i actually i i was born in lady brand which is a small town in the free state in south africa um but i didn't spend much time there at all before my parents relocated to Bloemfontein which I don't know, some people know it's a home of the Free State Cheetahs rugby team, which is pretty well known. Um, so I grew up there, um, went to primary school all the way up to grade seven before I moved to a uh, high school, boys school um, called Oakdale in the Western Cape. So that's where I went through high school. And yeah, I played some water polo, obviously in primary school when I was still in Bloemfontein. I went to Great College and yeah, High school, it's only been cricket, rugby, yeah. I saw that you did the, uh, I don't want to get this wrong, the Herald Cycle Tour. Did you compete in the 160 km kilometer or the 55 kilometer? No, that was a relay challenge, which actually consisted of uh, off-road, like mountain biking leg, as well as a road, road biking leg. So how that worked is you had a partner, you just decide between the two of you who's going to do the mountain biking leg and who's going to do the road cycling leg. So I took the road cycling leg, my partner went on the mountain biking leg, and I think, yeah, it was about 50, 60 kilometers in total. Wow. Wow. How, what was the training like with that, and how did it differ from, from training for rugby? Oh, uh, well, obviously... Um, we just basically winged it and went on our rugby fitness. We didn't have much time at all to prepare for this. It was kind of just a last minute thing we felt like doing. Um, we actually represented the rugby team that I was playing for at that time. So it was a bit of a corporate kind of challenge. Went up against guys from a corporate company back there. And those guys were avid cyclists. So they obviously kicked our butts. <laughs> What does your training regimen look like these days? I mean, off season, obviously, I stay off my feet as much as I can, um, which I don't know yet if that's a good or a bad thing. But I'll, I'll be, I'll, I do a lot of weight training with a bunch of friends every day. We're in the gym for about two hours, um, and then I try and get the running done closer to when the season starts again. Obviously, now I'm with the Tel Aviv Heat, so it's a pretty basic, normal training cycle that we're in like as if we would be in season which we basically are kind of in season off season thing but yeah it prepares me very well for the upcoming season every year i'm so excited to talk about Silva pete i you're in the finals this week or or i don't know when they're gonna play they haven't posted it on like the schedule or anything like that so but you guys have reached the finals correct yeah yeah we uh we played the semi-final about a week ago uh we played in budapest in hungary which was a good experience in itself we went there to play the semi-final. We had a good result, luckily, on the weekend. The weather was atrocious, though, but I'm glad we got a good result. And, yeah, I think the final is scheduled for the 22nd only of December. So hopefully we can make it back home for Christmas just in time. <laughs> you guys are playing the Black Lions, which is the only team that you guys have, ha haven't beat 
in the like run up to this finals. What are your emotions? What are your feelings right now? Yeah, the black line is a black line is a very good outfit. Um, obviously, a lot of Georgian internationals that represent that club. Uh, last season, we managed to beat them once and draw them another time. So I know we've got it in us if we do everything right on the day. But yeah, you got to you just got to get everything right on the day. But it's not impossible. We've done it before. Hopefully, we can do it again now when it counts. You guys are, are playing away from Tel Aviv, obviously, with everything that's happening there right now. Do you think that sports can help in being a distraction for those people and so it allows people to take their mind off of such heavy topics? Yeah, I see the situation with Israel. It's a pretty sad situation. I'm sure most people know um, what's going on there right now. So because of that, obviously, our team had to be based outside of Israel for this season because of safety reasons. But, I mean, yeah, it's a tough situation. It, I would definitely say it does make for a bit of a distraction um, for people that obviously, especially represent Israel in our team. It's, it's definitely a good distraction. But the one thing that I've learned from sports, and I'm not talking just about rugby, but sports in general, is that it definitely brings people together, especially when times are tough like this. I've seen it, like, in my own country what big difference it makes for instance like after winning the world cup for like at least a little bit of time people forget about their problems and they just come together and enjoy something it's just something people can to enjoy together regardless of how tough the times are so it's definitely it's definitely a good thing i mean they get a lot of love and support as well um regardless of what's happening in israel right now so that is that is always that's also good to see is it a distraction for the team are you guys having a problem with like with being away and not being in your own stadium and having to play kind of away every game, is it is it harder for your guys' team to, to come together and, and get these wins and do what you have to do? I mean, it's obviously, it's always nice if you can play home games in your own home stadium. Um, but the way the guys have handled the situation, having to play away every game, I think everyone's done a really good job um, so far. And yeah, it almost kind of, we kind of try to put it in the background, not think about it too much. And just try and get the best results we can and just show people that like regardless of what's going on back home this team is still here to compete and to prove a point to people and that's exactly what we aim to do with our last game that's left you've been all over the world man tel aviv uh south africa you've played for the west coast you've played for the east coast you've played here in utah you've played you're going to be in la here soon what are some traditions or some customs that you've taken with you to like each place that you are playing or where you're at now? Oh man, I always try and get on the gym playlists if I can, if no one's hogging the speaker. Um, I think that's definitely something that won't just change too easily. I think most people obviously know, like in my free time, I like to get on the decks and DJ a bit. So um, hopefully guys trust me with the music in the gym. But, I mean, there's so many different traditions and cultures that you can just take a little bit off from every team that you play for and take it with you. And, I mean, some won't always work everywhere, but at the end of the day, wherever you go, we're always trying to just create our own unique traditions and cultures and rituals and stuff, which makes it also pretty fun because that also just makes everyone buy into something new which also brings everyone together at the end of the day. So that's, that's pretty fun. But you see a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things, crazy things. Some things are probably better left unsaid. <laughs> but if it brings the team together, then I guess there's not too much wrong with it, is there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm glad you brought up being a DJ. Are you excited for the opportunity to be out in LA? Do you think it's going to help with the DJ, like, with the career, with the with the hobby, what do you think? What do you think that's going to be like for you out there? I I don't know. I can't say I know LA that much. I've literally only been there if I had to go play there. But it'll be good to explore the place from a resident kind of you know point of view and see what the people there are like, the community, obviously the nightlife. Who knows? Maybe if I'm lucky enough, I'll pick up a gig or two. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. What's the proudest DJ moment that you have, man? I don't even know. Actually, I think the proudest is when I actually started figuring all, all the buttons out. 
but um no I've, I've been doing it for quite a while which is fun um so yeah i don't know maybe just playing like some virtual stuff during COVID, streaming here and now getting views actually getting good like comments so yeah it's it's just fun like i said it's a hobby but you never know somebody came to you they were like man we want you to play at this dream venue what would that dream venue be for yourself Probably a big festival. I don't know. Electric Daisy Carnival in Vegas is pretty good. <laughs> I have it on good authority um, that when the going gets tough and uh, and stuff is not working out, that you send to take over and you're the field general and you tell everybody, hey, this is what we got to do. This is how we're going to buckle down and get this done. Where does that kind of come from? Uh, whoever told you that, I'll have to confirm. But I mean, I'll, I'll go on their good faith and good word on that. <laughs> But I, I do see myself um, kind of being like a silent leader. I'm never really part of any leadership groups within the team or anything like that. But when you're out there on the field, um, it doesn't really matter who the selected few are that are supposed to lead. You, everyone just, if you, if you have something that you can add that could make a difference on the field, like why not? So I think that just comes from experience playing at a very high level before I moved over to the MLR. I know there's a lot of um, young kids, obviously, with less experience. And, I mean, sometimes they will just tend to panic about certain things that you shouldn't be panicking about. So it's good to know that I can just kind of keep make everyone keep a bit of a calm head when they feel like things are spiraling out of control. So I'm glad I can add that. Really, it takes somebody to, it takes like a, a inner kind of voice to do that. And inner confidence. I mean, where does that come from for you? I think maybe it's because uh, it's something that I witnessed from players that I've looked up to um, when I started playing proper big league stuff, where I, I've been in situations where I felt like we literally, this is a runaway train right now. And I've just seen guys come in like nothing's going wrong, almost as if everything's going our way and just making everyone calm, just reminding them of this, what we need to be doing and just kind of, yeah, cooling everything down, making sure everyone knows what their job is and just going forward and like winning games from positions where we shouldn't, shouldn't have won them at all just because of things like that. So that's one thing that I've definitely taken with me throughout my career that if I see it lacking, I'd like to add that. You have 50 MLR caps to your name. I think you may even have over 50. But you definitely have 50. You hit that mark this year. Um, what's the secret, man? What's what's the like the equation to make sure that you're that you're well rested, but you're playing at a high level? Like, what do people need to know if they want to achieve that? Honestly, I can't really call it a secret sauce. Um, I think every player has their own things that work for them. But to, for me personally, it's just always trying to stay injury free as much as possible that's the only way you can be on the field stay on the field and um yeah it's just always making sure you like properly well conditioned because that minimizes injuries in itself so yeah it actually just comes down to preparation ahead of the season and then just staying on top of things right through um how many times have you won hit of the week with the warriors i know that they make a belt <laughs> They give you a belt if you if you win hit of the week. I'm just curious, how many times have you have you gotten it? I literally I can maybe remember of two or three. Um, vaguely remember, yeah. Uh, but um, it was always a close competition. Like the guys out there are animals, always chasing that belt. So it's a good fun challenge every weekend, obviously. But I've seen I've seen some guys put in proper hits where I know that <laughs> I probably couldn't beat that even if I tried. So, yeah, that, that was fun. It was definitely a fun tradition we had back at the Warriors. Something that I've seen from you that, that I think is very much you is uh, you have no fear just diving your head in to try and get a jackal over somebody else. It doesn't matter if a prop's coming over top to, like, smack you or, or anything. You just go for it, man. We're, like, <laughs> how do you coach that? How do you learn that? I don't, I don't, I won't say it's something you can really coach. I mean, obviously the technique, you can like do drills, you can train guys, make them get drips until they get it right. But I think at the end of the day, it kind of also just comes down to feeling. I would say it's about 80% feeling, 20% prayer that you come out there alive. <laughs>
So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, personally, I'd say it's like it's just feeling. Yeah, it's just gone feeling with those ones, especially because I'm so tall. It's a lot easier for the shorter guys to get down there. But yeah, I mean, why not have a crack? No one said you can't. How do you approach injury prevention? And, and like, what is your recovery routine? What does that look like for yourself? Honestly, I don't think I'm the best at that part of the game. I'm always trying to work on it. I should be doing a lot more than what I am. But I kind of just go on how my body's feeling. Like if, if I feel something's off, uh, my body will tell me. And then I'll just try and get as much stuff done as I can. I mean, if I can go to cryotherapy, even if it's just like a cold, just a cold swimming pool, cold water, maybe an ice bath if it's available. And then just like a lot of um, massages, massage gunning, all the small things that end, end up making a big difference at the end of the day. But yeah, I won't lie. There are times where I should be doing things that I probably am not doing it. So I'd rather just stay hydrated and take a little bit of a shortcut. But I mean, I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> it seems like it's bigger this year or bigger in the past couple of years than it's ever kind of been before. And like a big focus has been put onto it. I mean, it's, it's definitely, I think recovery is literally slowly becoming one of the biggest parts of being a rugby player. Um, because like I said, you don't really mean much when you're not playing. So it's it's always important to make sure you, you're able to be out there on a Saturday with the boys, uh, having a good time, and then making sure you're ready for the next weekend as soon as possible. So the challenge is always just making sure, like with a little bit of time you have before the next game, to make sure your body is tip top so you can um, perform at a like proper level. But yeah, it's definitely become a, a proper big thing. And there's so many things you can actually do nowadays. Like I feel like every now and then there's just new recovery treatments and tools that pop up to the market. And like, obviously you're curious, you want to try all of it, see what works, see what doesn't, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's become a really big thing. Was there a moment where you were like, I have to be in rugby. This, this is it. This is the sport for me. Yeah. See, my story is actually so funny. Um, cause I never really planned on playing rugby as a career after high school, uh, I just ended up going to a rugby institute down in Stellenbosch in Cape, Western Cape, South Africa. Um, initially, just for gap year, just kind of take a year off, go and just check it out. You know, um, I ended up going there and then I just ended up making the youth team there. And yeah, that's when I actually got my first like rugby deal actually um and we ended up having a very good season we won the championship and then they decided to offer me another deal one year deal obviously for the next season and i figured yeah maybe if i take two years off i can still get away with it um so i signed the deal stayed another year and we ended up winning the championship again and yeah then i was like i mean what are the odds and they offered me another one year deal and i really had to like make a decision like, am I going to keep doing this or am I actually going to go do what I planned on doing? Um, but I gave it another crack. I mean, I was having a good time. It was fun. Met a lot of cool people. Um, and yeah, that's actually when I debuted for the Stormers. And yeah, as soon as that happened, there was no turning back. Just full force, just going for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. What was it like playing for the Stormers? It was pretty special. I'll cherish that for the rest of my life. I think I played in the generation. I'm lucky to play in the generation that I did. Um, if you look at the guys that were still playing, the guys that I played with, I mean, it's legends like Scott Berger, um, John de Villiers, those kinds of guys. Um, yeah, but it's a bit. So I was very lucky to play among all those big names. And yeah, I've, I've actually, I was lucky to play a few of them, I was playing with them when they played their 50th and 100th games for the club as well. So, yeah, I think I was pretty lucky to be able to play with those guys back in, that, back in the day, back in that time. Transitioning from, from South African rugby to the MLR, what were your biggest takeaways? What were like the biggest differences and like just the biggest comparisons that you can make? Well, the first, I think one of the biggest things I had to get used to was obviously the pace of the game, um, which was considerably slower than what I'm used to. Um, but I, I mean, it wasn't the biggest change I had to make. I think just getting used to 
things like not having TMOs at games, um, playing on turf most of the time. It was it was actually the small things that I had to get used to, um, but also keeping in mind that it's a brand new league still. It's growing. Everything will come with time. But I must actually commend the people in charge of the league as well for the way the league has grown in this short amount of time. It is something I could have never imagined being a part of. And yeah, I'm lucky that I am. Do you feel like the league has gotten faster as the years have gone on? Or, I mean, I don't want to, you're 30 now, so I don't want to like <laughs> say that you've gotten slower, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> do you feel like the league's getting faster in general? Or is it just something that, yeah, it's still kind of slow. We're just not getting the best athletes that, that the USA has to offer kind of thing. No, actually, I think every year the athletes the athletes are incredible, actually, and it just gets better every single season. Like, I think I told someone the other day, it's like every season I go back there, it's like a whole different game from what it was the previous season. It's definitely, it just it gets quicker. The quality of play just improves so much so quickly, which is exactly what you want. Um, you want this league to move in that direction. And it's also, I think, yeah, the experienced players that come in obviously push the, the, push the envelope in terms of that stuff just because of previous experiences and leagues they played in. So I think everyone benefits from the experience that comes into the league and then the homegrown players just pick up on it so quickly and they just get, they just improve. Like every season, it's incredible, the change. So, yeah, the league is definitely moving in the right direction. Um, I can only imagine what it's going to be like by the time the USA holds, hosts the World Cup. Who is either the funniest person on the field or the best trash talker on the field, like from, from your playtime? Oh, man, the trash talking is going to be a tough one. But if I had to say someone, definitely Tyler Fisher, our center, he... <laughs> He can let his mouth go sometimes, but if you're really looking for a good laugh, Paul Mullen hands down. How much trash talk actually happens in the scrum when you guys are all band down together? It's the closest you're ever going to get to each other. What? I don't want to ask really what goes on because I'm not sure I'm ready to know. But like, <laughs> what's like the funniest thing you've heard down there? Oh man, I've I've had I've heard so many things. Like if I had to point out one thing now, I couldn't even think of one. But to be fair, um, I, I think people really think there's so much trash talking going on, which it's actually less than people would expect. But most of the time when there is trash talking, it's the front rows, the ones that literally touch each other's heads and battle it out there. I mean, us guys at the back, we're just trying to make sure our guys stay in front of us. But usually when it's the trash talking, it's the, it's the front rows always going at each other. In a scrum, what is the flankers like number one directive? What are you what are you told like this is your absolute job that you have to get done? Well, uh, I guess it depends. I mean, on defense, obviously try to get out as quick as possible um, when the ball is out, but also not too quick that you take your weight off the scrum. So that's kind of a fine line they have to balance. As well as just kind of call the rhythm of the scrum, especially on attack. Um, so everyone could hear what the call is. Um and then we just work together on the call. But I think, yeah, on defense, the, probably the biggest job is to make sure they get out in time, but not too early. Is it as a lock or a flanker, which position do you prefer? Honestly, I actually enjoyed playing eight for Utah. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I enjoyed playing eight for Utah a lot. But I mean... I've been bouncing between lock and loose forward so much that at this point it feels the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the difference between the two positions for you? I mean, what do you have to do that's that's different for each position there? Uh, I feel like at lock, I, <laughs> I'm counted on to do a lot more of the dirty work. No one really sees getting to the breakdowns, upset a few guys. <laughs> But um, at eight, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I love the freedom that comes with eight. You get a lot of open space that you can run with with the ball. Um, a lot of plays are actually also designed around you, which makes it fun. Um, so yeah, there's different aspects. Whereas with um, with lock, I also enjoy doing all the line outs. I actually enjoy that a lot. Doing the hard grafts, it's actually fun as well. So yeah, I mean, it's it's I usually enjoy playing 
both in one game. I would play first half at eight and move to lock in the second half. So you just, it's all about balance, you know. Well, let me ask you, man. Um, it's a bummer that you're going to be in LA this next year. What are you excited about most about LA? What is the most disappointing thing about leaving Utah? Oh, the most disappointing thing about leaving Utah is definitely the people that I met there. I'm um, having to leave them behind, my former teammates, even though a lot of them are also leaving. Um, I think what we built there over the last four years was, was pretty special. And yeah, it's just kind of scary not knowing if you're ever going to have that again. Um, I think that's the biggest thing for me. Because, I mean, we bonded on the field and on a personal level as well. And, I mean, those are guys that I could genuinely call my friends. So I'm, I'm definitely going to miss that a lot. Um, but what I'm looking forward to in LA is obviously a fresh new start. It's going to be nice to stay by the coast again. Um, I think it's just all the whole surprise factor, not knowing how things are going to pan out, but obviously hoping for the best. So it's exciting. New challenge. Um, yeah, we're ready for it. Awesome. It's awesome. Well, good luck uh, in your finals, man. I'm I'm rooting for Tel Aviv. I think it's it's solid that they have a team and and you guys seem to put on a show and and do really well and get things done as as much as the next um, out there. So that's that's awesome. Um, what actually had you go over there? Go over to Tel Aviv and start playing there. Well, there was, there was it's a, it was a lot of factors at the end of the day. Um, obviously, my yeah, I think the opportunity came when Utah um, decided to trade me. That was a big surprise to me. Um, yeah, I won't dive into that too much. Um, but yeah, that was a tough. That was a bit of a bitter pull to swallow, especially looking back at the four years that I spent there, Courtney totally off guard, like surprised me. But uh, yeah, it was not really surprising when I learned that LA was interested since um, the ownership is the same people that have the Tel Aviv heat. So it kind of just made sense to work with people that I know and I can trust. So yeah, it was actually a pretty simple decision. Hold on, wait a minute. If you know these people, then I need, to, <laughs> I need, more, I need more questions answered. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so the people that own the Tel Aviv Heat are also the LA owners? Yes, that's correct. I've seen a lot of things where people are actually doubting that this thing is actually going to happen. Um, and it's so tempting to kind of just tell them what's happening. But then again, we'll just we'll just sit back and surprise everyone. So is Kevin going to be the head coach out there then too? Is he going to go from the Tel Aviv Heat to then, to then coaching out in LA? No, he won't. He'll he'll definitely be he'll be he'll be bouncing between the two, doing oh, yeah. coaching, but he won't be the head coach. No. That's Don't really want to cool. reveal too much right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, because the Tel Aviv, uh, how you guys have been rolling uh, over there in Europe, which is a really high competition yeah. level, and so for them to have a uh, an ownership in in a U.S. team, man, that's cool. That is very cool. Yeah, no, it's super super exciting stuff. That's all going to drop. So. Like I said, stay tuned. That's what it was. The ownership found out you told me, and so they booted both of us out. They're like, yeah. <laughs> imagine. Uh, no, um, yeah, man, that's that's way cool. Uh, yeah. So, so when you went over to LA, I mean, do you know much about like what they're gonna be, what their mascot will be, what their name will be? Do you know any of that kind of information, or can I sneak that out of you? I mean. Uh... I know, I know, I know a lot of things that's going on there right now, but I feel like I'll just leave it and wait and let everyone find out at the same time. Don't want to uh, spill all the beans now, but all I'd say is for everyone who's assuming that it's just another bust, it's definitely not. It's happening. That's awesome. That's so cool. So, did they actually purchase the? They actually purchased the Atlanta team then, and they're moving them. Yeah. Or did they just start their whole? Okay, cool. That's cool. Yeah, no, they essentially they they bought over, they took over ownership of Atlanta and moved them down. What does your father do? Because I've seen him a couple of times in different things, and it makes me go, oh, there's like a discipline here. <laughs> so no, my dad is actually uh, just uh, 
in traffic in South Africa. So he's like an inspector of traffic in the free state. Yeah, that's his job title, but he's retired now, enjoying enjoying retirement back at home. A little jealous, but uh, at least he's having a good time. He's earned it. Solid. That's solid. So he's a he, essentially a beat cop. He he goes out. He makes sure that everything's working properly and does yes, sir, yeah. does everything that it needs to be going through. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. Yeah. Do you think that contributes to you maintaining like a regimented lifestyle to be a professional athlete? My dad kind of in his free time was an athlete himself. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard about like comrades marathon. He used to do those, which is an ultra marathon. So. I don't know in miles how far it is, but I think the race is about 90 kilometers, 90, 95 kilometers that you run. And you've got 12 hours to complete it, which is, it's, it's tough. You just spend the whole day running. So he's done that about 22 times. So and that's, endurance yeah. is like, <laughs> yeah. that's just in yeah. the blood, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, I think, um, any sporting discipline that I have, I probably have got it, gotten it from seeing how he pre always prepared for his races um, so long ahead of time, um, keeping his nutrition up while having a nine to five. <laughs> You've blown my mind now, and all my notes don't matter because I'll, all I want to do is ask you more about this LA team. But I know I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> hey, honestly, I'm, I'm super tempted to just let everything out, but I think it'll be much more of a surprise if they just saw one day. Hey, here we oh, are. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's going to be much more. I'm sure that they have like things ready to go that they're ready to announce, and like, <laughs> uh, fantastic, man. What do you think your future goals are? You've played with the Stormers. You've played in, in South Africa. You've played MLR. You've played overseas in the European Cup. What's next for you, man? Honestly, that's kind of a little mystery for me right now. Um, maybe because this whole LA thing is pretty fresh still. Uh, so I guess I'll... I think I just want to get there first um, and hit the ground running and then maybe see from there which way the wind's going to blow me. Um, I mean, obviously, I've got so many interests in so many different things. It's a little hard to just kind of pick one and say that's where I'm heading. I feel like I'm just going to let things um, evolve and go naturally, and I'll see where I end up. South Africa just won the World Cup, first to four on the sleeve. Yeah, <laughs> you're repping, <laughs> repping it with your own jersey. Absolutely, man. I, what does that mean? What does that mean for you as a player that's playing overseas? I mean, how do you draw inspiration from it? Do you, what does that do for you? Man, to me, it's actually so mind blowing to think that we actually went back to back. I don't think anyone gave us a chance, um, to be honest. Um, and it's honestly, it's such a hard thing to do, and especially at that level. So it is just so exciting to have the Web Ellis Cup for another four years. Um, and yeah, I definitely draw a lot of inspiration from it. I saw what it did to our country, like everyone's friends right now. It's a party in South Africa. So um, yeah, it's just, it, the vibes are so good back in South Africa. As a, like the country as a whole, everything just feels like a weight fell off our shoulders because we do have so many problems back home. So this was definitely a little light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I draw a lot of inspiration from them because a lot of those boys that actually played, I've played with before. So yeah, it's just, I'm so happy and happy for them, proud for them. And yeah, man, it's, it's just like, it's, it's super exciting. It's kind of still sinking in. Is there anything that you wish that people knew about you that maybe nobody asks about or talks about? Well, I don't think anyone really knows that. I'm a way better cricket player, actually, than a rugby player, and that's what I wanted to do after school professionally. What would you like to say to the fans of Utah as you as you kind of get out the door? Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't put up a post yet. Um, literally, I've been thinking about doing that, not knowing if I should and if I should not. But what I would say is like, yeah, it's been it's been it's been an amazing four years playing at Utah. Um, Although I'll wholeheartedly miss playing at Zion's Bank in front of everyone and linking up with everyone after every game. Um, I don't want them to lose faith. I know things, a lot of things are changing that side now, but they have a good team. Um, 
all, all hope is not lost. I know a lot of guys are leaving, but still go out, support the boys. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who's there. Um, the game will always stay fun. We'll still come and play there. It'll, it'll, everyone will still see each other there at some point. So, yeah, just, just stay faithful. Yuri, we really appreciate you coming on the show. We think that what you have done in the league has been awesome. We're very excited to see what you can do out in L.A. Um, we're very excited to see uh, everything that you do going forward. So, man, just congratulations to you. 50 caps is a huge accomplishment here in this league. And, dude, go get them for the Tel Aviv Heat. Go get those uh, the Black Lions. Go beat them. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it, and thank you for having me on your show.